Hi and welcome to the sixth session in our Back to Swimming series with me Wayne from SwimmingCyclingRunning.com Up till now we've been mainly concentrating on form and balance but in this session we're going to actually test you. Yeah, this is the first time we're actually going to start testing your speed and actually ramping up the intensity a little bit so you actually get out of breath and start getting back into some form of condition when you're swimming. So hang around because this is going to be a slightly harder session than you've been doing in the previous five weeks. And remember this is a series so if you want to find out when we, uplo when we upload more sessions for you then just subscribe and hit that notification bell. And if you do like what we're doing just give us a thumbs up it really helps the channel thanks very much for that. Even though we're doing a time trial we want to start a sensible way and that means with a warm-up. And what we're going to do this week is two 200 meter swims where the first one we're going to just swim steady and the second one we're going to start picking up the speed as we go through the 200. We're now going to put our fins on for some drills and the first set of drills we're going to do is kicking on your side changing after every breath. Now you have done this before but not for a short while so we're going to go to the computer and just show you how it should be done and give you some tips on how best to balance yourself up in the water. Now when you're doing the kick on the side drill you really want to get to the surface. I'm going to run this at about half speed. Get to the surface and then take a breath and balance yourself up. Now if we look at this swimmer she's now, now I'm perfectly balanced in line with the surface up there and she's looking if you look she's looking forward and down over that shoulder and that's absolutely perfect you can see that perfect balance in her stroke there and when she's going to take a breath I really want you to see something very important see how she exhales through the nose and the mouth and then turns up to breathe now remember she's holding her breath for quite a time because she's kicking so she's exhaling just turning up to breathe now notice not really much is moving away from the surface. She's really kept a reasonable position in terms of alignment with her body. Try not, if you can possibly help it, to curve that body. It's much better to hold it dead straight. And then she puts her head back in and continues on. And you'll see the next girl coming up here as she starts to breathe again. She exhales through her nose and mouth turns up to breathe, stays in that nice balanced position and comes through. Now she's going to do changing after every breath so she's going to change from one side to the other um, and that's exactly how you should do it. Change from one side to the other without moving your body excessively. All right so that's four of those on 115 and we're then with our fins still on going to do six 50s on 105 in sets of three. The first three are going to be the pointed catch-up drill that we did last week. Now I'll, I'll give a note there to the last week's session so you can see that if you wish. The second lot is going to be finger drag and this is a really important drill. It's a relaxation drill so we're going to go to the computer and I'm going to show you someone doing it really well and a little explanation of how you can do that. The key to successfully doing finger drag is relaxation and you'll see here that Adam is completely relaxed when he's actually doing the stroke. Now if we stop it as he brings his arm forward, now he's bringing his arm fairly close to his body and we look at that angle, um, we can take slightly out. So he's got about an angle of about 46 degrees. Now a lot of people can't get an arm that close, they can't get that high an elbow. So if that's the case, just extend your elbow out to the side, have an angle of about 90 degrees, but just keep that beautiful relaxation in your arm as it comes forward with your fingertips, as you can see, just slightly dragging the surface of the water. That will be fine. When you're breathing, as you're doing this, make sure you're breathing towards the end of your stroke. So you can see he's turning to breathe and he's breathing just as his arm exits the water and as his arm passes his shoulder he's then letting that drag his head back into the water. I'd say he's slightly late there, he could actually rotate his head slightly earlier but you can see his head's back in the water before his arm is back in the water. Now it spins off. 
and we're going to do a building set because when you're going to do a time trial you want to previously have got to the race pace you actually want to do in the time trial. So we're doing 450s on 1 minute and 5 seconds where we're going steady, medium, faster, fast. And so that fast one at the end should definitely be at the pace or above the pace you want to do in your 200 meter time trial which is coming up. So we're now heading into our time trial and this is a 200 meter swim done at your best possible pace. Now your best possible pace is close to your PB or even beating your PB for 200 meters. So that's quite intense but it's not maximum speed every single length. What we're trying to do is pace it out over that 200 meters so you get an even pace right the way through. Importantly please take your time as you finish because we're going to use that time in the main set that's coming later. Now that's quite an effort so we need to take a recovery swim. We're going to do 100 meters recovery. Do this front crawl, backstroke or a mixture of the two, whichever you like, just so you take your heart rate right the way down again and relax ready for the main set. Right, so we're now on our main set and what we're going to do are seven lots of a 150 meter swim on one minute followed by one 200 meter swim on two minutes. And the aim is to hit exactly the same pace as you did in that 200 meter swim. So the 50 meters one quarter that time and the 100 meters is half of that time. Now because this is less distance that shouldn't be too difficult to hit. But as you come to the later swims, you may find that quite difficult. So it's going to be a testing set and your heart rate is going to remain quite high throughout. Now the ability to hold pace is hugely important, especially for longer distance swimmers such as triathletes. If you can't hold a pace, you don't know what's going to happen in a race. But you should also know the pace you're holding at the effort you're giving out. And this type of set is key and fundamental in drilling into your brain exactly what you might be able to do in a race. When you come to it in a race, you'll feel, yes, I've done this intensity before. I know what it feels like. I know I can keep going instead of, hmm, is this too fast? Is this too slow? If you find that on those times you can't hit one quarter and one half of that 200 meter time, then I suggest you do fewer repeats and just extend the time to 1.15 and say 2.30 instead of 1 minute and 2 minutes. The aim here is to keep the intensity high. So just slowing down will not actually be doing what we want to do in terms of the effect we want on your swimming. After that set's complete, we just have the swim down. Now I've suggested 150 meters, but you can do more if you have the time. And that is the end of our sixth session. You've done 2,600 metres at quite a high intensity. We've been mostly in level three today, which is unusual up till now. But level three is the racing level that you're going to have, unless you're actually a swimmer, in which case you might actually be going higher than that. But if you're a long distance swimmer, level three is where you need to be most of the time. So this is a key set to actually get you fit for the future and back to racing again. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you next week. Won't be quite so intense next week.